Доброго дня. Good afternoon, dear ladies and gentlemen. In order to open our press conference, I would like to give the floor to Yuri Stelmashuk, director of the uh, Ukrainian House. Good afternoon, uh, esteemed uh, gentlemen. Glory to the Jesus. Uh, this press conference is important because our society is living through a crisis. And first of all, we are talking about the psychological crisis uh, situation. It's understood that the events in the front line are leave very deep uh, psychological wounds in the migration of uh, the uh, resident of those areas to the central regions of Ukraine also aggravates the situation because they are very often they find themselves in a cul de sac and they really need some psychological um, help to be given to them because everybody knows that if a, a person finds in her, uh, his or her hearts and uh, souls some uh, strength, you know, they find the necessary a mm, vigor to continue to live under such uh, uh, difficult conditions. That's why this press conference and the actions uh, carried out by our psychologists serve um, uh, the vital importance because in the end, in the long run, when we are uh, you know, we develop necessary techniques and the uh, principles which can be used in w dealing with those people, we'll be able then to stabilize the level no level of stability, maybe I should put it this way. And the most important will be able to give a chance to people to uh, to uh, believe uh, in love despite the heavy and severe wounds, um, uh, both physical and psychological, they uh, received. That's why all those developments which have been uh, carried out by the foundation and the institute with the assistance of the United Nations and uh, the government of Japan, they bore, uh, they actually made a very serious contribution uh, to, uh, in our lives, so we can share our experience with other countries um, in their methodology. Unfortunately, this is not the only case the world over, and we, we do appreciate the assistance given to us by our uh, foreign partners. Uh, thank you. The mic is turned to the floor is given to Ludmila Litvinenko. The head of the project for psychological help for internal displaced persons from Crimea and Eastern Ukraine. Good afternoon to everybody. I would like to know that over the last two years, when we gathered together at the roundtables, press conferences, and other types of conferences, my colleagues, psychologists, social workers, uh, psychiatrists, they raised the same topic. Uh, the uh, the topic of war in the mass scale, large scale traumatization um, resulting from that and the consequences of such traumas and what we can do in order to um, uh, to, to cope with those uh, consequences and to integrate or reintegrate the people to the normal life. Um, uh, under the Institute of Psychology and Emily of Kostuk, who introduced the medical psychological assistance um, uh, group and, and the extreme uh, help to by the hotline, the ecological uh, follow-up of those uh, fighters who are going through the stage two rehabilitation. The third group, uh, and the, the, of those who suffered, they do not even have the kind of established term. They are called different ways. Uh, the uh, refugees, IDPs, uh, migrants, uh, etc. Um, and in order to talk about the efficient psychological assistance or aid to such victims, uh, I believe that all those who work with this group have to think about the psychological conditions they find themselves in. Why? Because we can say that they are uh, uh, on permanently in the kind of the uh, post-traumatic situation, what we saw while working with them. In order to understand how they feel, we have to place ourselves in their uh, shoes, so to say. Every day when we wake up, we, we should think how, uh, what conditions they are. Uh, first of all, they feel uh, the severe stressful situation. Even before they migrate back, they still um, they feel themselves in the um, the heart of the events there, and, and, and now, now you are talking about their, their 
uh, resettlement. We can only imagine what kind of psychological burden it is. And after they migrated and they resettled, when they find themselves in different place, where all the uh, the norms of normal or uh, function of the human behavior are violated, I would say, or different. And during the adaptation or adjustment in those places they find themselves in, this period of the adjustment is not an easy one. If we are talking about the conditions which we could uh, see, just judging by the nature of the addresses of the IDPs, the, uh, the, the let's say, depressive stages, impossibility to to uh, to take care of the uh, of different kind of uh, psychological disorders like the uh, feed, um, the, 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 the despair, the uh, violations of you know, the sleeping conditions, the, the separation from the relatives, despair, social problems which can be considered as psychological ones. We can say that all those kind of sentiments were the feelings they experience, they can be subdivided into three major groups when we can say there are some kind of violations or disorders, disorders in the efficient sphere, uh, affects uh, our emotions, our feelings, sensations, and uh, we psychologists call it a kind of emotional blunting when uh, the condition is kind of depressed, gloomy, it's uh, impossibility to feel the gloom, uh, the feeling of glad, of happiness, of love. We also can talk about disorders in cognitive sphere, uh, even there are some uh, problems with um, the memory, memorizing, concentration of attention, some kind of, uh, for, uh, when people start to forget something, the changes in the behavioral a sphere, they, um, uh, we mostly pay attention to the fact that very often there is some uh, kind, kind uncontrolled aggression, uh, uh, extra irritation, uh, uh, let's say agility, uh, etc. If we are talking about the symptoms which we can uh, witness in the IDP, in the PC, it reminds us of the symptoms when we are talking about the acute response to stress or post-traumatic stress disorders, PTSDs. And our uh, experts, not only psychologists, social workers, or psych uh, even psych uh, or psychiatrists, uh, we try to uh, actually master the situation ourselves because we, uh, we we are blessed. We didn't have any war for many years, and that was something which no, nobody expected. And I believe in order to make our aid efficient, we have to pull our efforts. We we can say that some center is better than another, another some program is better than another one. We have to remain in this field of the efficient psychological uh, assistance. Uh, I would like to say a few words about our project, which was established by the uh, charity um, organization um, Ukrainian House Cultural Cooperation. Um, uh, uh, we are blessed that we have such a project supported by the donor organizations, which make it possible to uh, have a different view of this program um, uh, problem and to uh, carry out some research and studies. Within the framework of this project, we actually developed some of the re uh, methodological um, recommendations prepared by our laboratory in the Psychological Institute. I believe those uh, these kind of um, uh, booklets or handbooks will become uh, some kind of the uh, um, auxiliary resources. Uh, for the psychologists and all the assistants because they are involved in this situation and definitely in this or another way they actually are subject to some kind of uh, indirect traumatization. Thank you a lot, Ludmila. I give the floor uh, to Yuri Zhevaladov, uh, Vice President of Ukrainian Psychiatrist Association, uh, practicing uh, psychiatrist and psychiatrist therapist as a representative of the professional association psychotherapist this is somewhat a different institution from the practices in or clinical psychologists the traditional different but i'm going to echo uh, the uh, the words uh, mentioned by psychologists and uh, i would like to repeat that uh, the, the situation for ourselves as professionals this is not something standardized standard or usual to us 
First of all, this is the challenge to us. We as, as strive. We would like to respond to the situation in a maximum decent way. Way at the same time, we unite our efforts. Practicing psychologists, clinical psychologists, psychiatrists, and psychotherapists, in order to 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 be to maximum extent useful and the maximum extent efficient, or effective, efficient, efficacy working with those people we deal with. Um, speaking about some kind of uniting uh, methodology or some kind of um, uniting uh, objectives, uh, our professional community uh, visualized this in some kind of essential um, per per perspectives of what was going on today. Uh, we um, actually uh, uh, focus our attention, our professional competence, our belief and responsibility uh, so that uh, if you're talking about what's going on with our um, uh, clients or customers, not to see in them it's not something which uh, suppresses them or um, what, what makes them actually um, uh, absolutely uh, incapable of uh, protecting themselves or to save something uh, vital in them which makes them human beings, which helps them to, uh, to remain uh, socially um, useful and uh, to preserve their personalities. At the same time, we try to see in each uh, patient, and we discuss that, you know, we try to see in them uh, the depths which sometimes can be revealed during the crisis. Uh, and actually, we follow such uh, the initial term of the crisis. On the one hand, this is some kind of the cleansing or cleaning uh, sentiment or sensation. On the other hand, there's some kind of the um, uh, solution, decision to be taken regarding the renovation or starting a new, um, uh, uh, a new life, a new trend in life. And actually, we're talking about the uh, li uh, persons living through this um, uh, crisis. We are talking about something internal because traumas are external um, phenomenon, and the the psychological trauma is in internal. And sometimes we we see that. Some people reveal some new senses in their uh, life, and this kind of uh, duality where we work, on one hand to save, to preserve, uh, and on the other hand to help the person to see these depths of the sense of their being, of their life. This is a very individual um, worker approach. On the other hand, it has some kind of uh, cultural basis, foundations, and models. What a person can lose. He or she can lose her physically something, for example, a really close person to him or her. And this actually imprints some very negative, uh, has a negative imprint of his mind. <coughs> You can lose something psychologically very valuable to this person. They can lose some kind of anchors, if you will. Uh, when we uh, uh, work with IDPs or refugees, the anchors, which actually with the vital anchors in their own lives, some orientation, some kind of uh, world outlook, some political views or whatever, and uh, this kind of psychological loss, and this kind of vulnerability or uh, deprivation psychologically has to be taking care of not to allow that to be too much traumatizing traumatizing also persons can uh, lose the uh, sense of their life or the outlook this is even more deeper loss or more tangible loss so usually a person um, bases himself or herself on some kind of assumptions or believes that the world is full uh, of kind of one if I behave reasonably I will um, have a reasonable response to my goodness and if I'm good in this world I mean so this kind of the uh, cognitive uh, persuasions actually uh, provide the foundations in our life and we, when we lose those foundations uh, we can see in our um, clients and our patients uh, a lot of disorientation um, the sense of uh, irreversible losses which can be 
they manifested in the big power of emotions, the uh, loss of the orientation, the kind of spatial and time um, uh, uh, navigation in your life. And the most uh, hard loss is the orientation, uh, existential loss. We lose the, our relationships with the pe other people with some meaningful situations or meaningful you know, phenomena. And since a person actually lives uh, full with his emotions in life and the relations, when we lose some of our relations, we lose part of ourselves. So this kind of aspect, trying to support the person in order for those losses not to ruin too much the personality, not to ruin or damage the soul of the person, his belief or the aspirations or expectations. On the other hand, our task as the psychotherapist is not so much to treat, not to cure, but rather to help this person or those persons to, not so much to, uh, to, uh, to return him to life, but to help him to see some internal resources which uh, can prompt him to how to do that, how to direct his efforts or her efforts to acquire new perspectives, new foundations, and new sources of his life. This kind of existential perspective, I repeat myself, this kind of um, uh, 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 general professional outline, and the view, uh, the, there are a lot of uh, such directions. In some directions are associated to many techniques, specific tools, which we use or help to use. In other directions, a lot of humani humanitarian, humanist, humanistic, uh, wholesome orientations and existential orientations. And this is kind of uh, challenges which unite us as the professionals. And we share our experience with each other, we help each other. And now we feel that uh, in many aspects we succeed in that, and uh, this means our help assistance to those victims who badly need our uh, help and assistance and this uh, requires uh, even more deeper uh, depths you know i would say um short uh, in short our task is to be together with our clients and to share his new um, a way or mode of being. Our clients change and we change with them, together with them. And this is a reflection of some deep going sense of life. And crisis is very painful and uh, terrible uh, sentiment or sensation. But this is a part, just a part of life. Life is, means more than that. Thank you. The floor is given to Valeri, please, uh, head of the uh, Church of the Fund uh, Life for the sake of the people. Oh, I'm sorry, the floor is given to Oleg Yushenko, director of medical company in Tosana. Uh, good day, everyone. I agree that the crisis is a part of life, and life is bigger than a crisis or a stage in life. I want to say that Partnership is very important, both of uh, institutions, uh, government institutions and charitable organizations and private investors, companies. It's important not to forget that we all are together and we should help people. Someone can provide psychological help, someone can treat help with money. It's uh, very important to unite, to get together and help people. And uh, our company provide he provides help uh, uh, by providing ambulances and other help to ATO servicemen and military hospitals, a company in Tostana. And it's very important that uh, private companies remember that they work in Ukraine, and the policy of our state is help is prov uh, provision of help, uh, not only to those who are in need, but also to support children 
and uh, uh, different charitable projects. Thank you. And now I give the floor to Natalia Vasily, PhD in pharmaceutical sciences and um, Maidan activist. Good afternoon. I uh, uh, on the 1st of December, two years ago, a medical service of uh, the uh, Maidan was created and it is registered as a, an NGO. And we see that uh, those ideas that were in Maidan they were introduced in medical service and they are acute and they need to be implemented further. And uh, um, today we continue to reform the system of uh, uh, health services and uh, we provide uh, those who were injured and those who suffered and left Lugansk and Donetsk uh, oblasts, and also we provide help to children, and uh, we also deal with the wounded, with the wounded. So we have different areas of activity, and we um, create a single a medical space. It's not important uh, to us. Uh, uh, we don't care about uh, um, uh, we don't care about religion, race, or anything else. We just need, um, see a person, whether it is a serviceman or uh, just a simple resident. We provide help to everyone. This is a priority for uh, everyone, and um, uh, this idea is propagated by our service and we introduce it into life. And uh, successful uh, experience of, uh, uh, we invite uh, Hussan Imani to take the floor. Hi, good afternoon. I'm uh, I'm uh, from Syria. I come to Ukraine in 2012, uh, then in 2013, and I apply to a refugee in UNHCR. I win uh, a grant in 2013, and I open my restaurant here in Kiev in uh, in Badol. So uh, I am uh, agree with all the respectable speaker, which one they spoke before me. Uh, refugee or uh, ITP, it's uh, really a huge uh, crisis, but uh, people need to understand because those people, they just need a chance and uh, give a hand to help. Because most of the people, they are thinking that uh, the refugee or ITP they are like poor people. They will uh, share uh, with us everything. We will be without nothing. No, those people, they are not poor people. Maybe they don't have money, but they, have, they are very rich in experience and in, in idea. So only these people need to give a hand and to understand them because their situation, it's not easy. Those people, they lose their life, which one they used to be, leave it. I mean, they, they, they lose their friend, their houses, them lifestyle, they lose everything. So uh, now it's uh, it, it sharing between the association and the, this person. This person, he has to accept him himself in the beginning, and then the, the people, they have to accept him as well. Because if we are accept him, he will be a very active person in our community. If we are not accept him and continue to refuse him, we are going to uh, create a criminal project because end of the day, uh, people, they want to eat. And when the stomach is empty, the head, it's stopped to working. So we have to give for them our hand. We have to help him. Uh, for me, when the Ukrainian crisis starts, I'm uh, directly hire uh, three IDP. 
two from uh, Donbass and one from Crimea. They are very good people and they, they just want to work, they want to live their life. So, and now since that time when I want to, like, to hire new people, I'm just only looking for IDP people, just to give for them chance. So just please, let's give the hand for these people, let's to understand them, let's to understand those people, they, they lose them life, which one they used to leave it. So it's, it's very hard when you are, lose your roots. Thank you too much. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, now the floor is given to Grigory Kabanchenko, head of the Public uh, Council under the Minister of Social Policy. Thank you for the invitation extended to me. We are the uh, Public Council. We try to unite whatever is, is can be united in our country. In other words, uh, volunteers, the public at large in the, um, in the country or the government. Uh, due to the fact that um, you know, the, uh, we have 113 organizations in our council which take care of the IDPs, I would like to correct the, the former speaker. They, uh, they uh, invented such a term, the lawyers, the internal displaced persons, meaning that uh, those who are displaced inside the country, and they try to uh, come up with a program, reintegration of IDPs into the life, of the uh, bigger Ukraine, or which is not occupied, I mean. And this is uh, point number one. Point number two, uh, the war actually give, um, give birth to the soldiers who have been demobilized, who came back to our life, and they face a lot of problems. We managed to include in the budget more than 60 million grivnia for the psychological rehabilitation of the former ATO fighters, but due to the fact that there, it takes a lot of time in our country to do something today, this money hasn't been spent or used. So I would like to call to everybody who sits, uh, who is in this podium, in the audience present here. So please, this state uh, service for the veterans and participants in the ATO operation. So please participate in the uh, spending of the state funds and help us to take care of the rehabilitation effort. Um, starting from the Maidan time, uh, everything is being done by by the volunteers. So the, uh, you, you know, the ADPs uh, know the problems ADPs themselves better than anybody else. I don't know what is the point of view of the psychologists, by, uh, but the person can be better, best understood by another person who found himself or herself under the same circumstances sometime in the past. You know. So it so happened that two of my friends were killed in action in the front line, and they are widows today, um, work with the families of other persons who have been killed. They know each and every one, and they try to help them, to rehabilitate themselves. And the, uh, the government even forgot to provide some assistance to them. They were not included even in the program of rehabilitation. We tried to do that. To do that. Well, we believe that the IDPs uh, need to be rehabilitated psychologically, or the soldiers should be included in this list, but not the families of those killed in actions. Um, and today, uh, two years after uh, the starting of that events, they cannot uh, take care even of those who were killed during the Maidan events. But now we have, we found uh, 148 families of those who were killed in the ATO operations who are not considered to be the um, families of the ATO participants. We also had about more than 800 children of those who were killed in the ATO operations. The government, you know, they, if, if those persons are not registered with the center of their um, rehabilitation support or whatever, they are not given that support. You know that um, the slogan, socialism means accounting. If we did not have uh, you or anybody like you, nobody would take care of those people altogether. So not always we are able to unite uh, volunteers, different centers, 
Uh, in other words, the, the public councils works with 47 centers which provide the rehabilitation services, all kinds of religious confessions. Whoever can do that or are capable of doing that, they try to provide this assistance. Maybe I'll be supported by, by everybody, but there is no systematic normal policy uh, of the government in this sphere. There is no, but no one who is responsible, no, no, the, not the number one person. There are different policies pursued by the Minister of Social Service or the Minister of Health. They do, do, they do not do anything because they say we do not have the minister, so we cannot take care of this policy. So if we fail to unite the efforts of the volunteers of all those centers, you name them, you know, in the government, we won't be able to provide assistance to the uh, one and a half million of IDPs and almost 200,000 of those who uh, participated in the ATO uh, operation. As a result, you know, the military guys act like the military guys. He cannot adapt himself or themselves. Uh, you know, for example, he doesn't like uh, something. For example, how people be, uh, be behave in, in this or another restaurant or the, uh, or the cafe. He will throw a grenade inside, you know. He acts the way he used to act in the, uh, during that operation. Uh, and that's why I uh, really I, I thank you very much for inviting me. And I believe that only pulling our efforts will be able to force uh, the government to, uh, to turn their face to those problems. And only uniting our efforts, all the stakeholders will be able to do something about that. Thank you. This is the end of our press conference. And actually, this is only the beginning of our cooperation. Thanks to everybody for your participation. Thanks a lot.